one good afternoon. I have here Miss April of the Weed Spot. Um, and I just learned of the Weed Spot, April. So can you tell me a little bit about your business? So we are a CBD retailer. We sell coffees um, that are infused with CBD. We can customize like coffees um, that you can get at any coffee shop. Uh, we do iced and hot coffees. We sell teas and then your normal CBD products that you can find um, anywhere. Uh, we, we carry over 250 products, but the special thing about us is we source our products mostly 85 percent of our products come from um, small farmers who um, put a lot of care and quality in the products that they sell so we um, carry a good selection of, of, of and a wide array of products but you know they're grown with care and you know no pesticides and, and you know we we develop relationships with with the farmers so we know who's growing growing what we sell so are these farmers local or? The, not yet, not yet, because in March, the the law, um, well, the law changed last September that allowed for growers to start growing in Texas, but the applications didn't come out until March. So we, uh, we, the biggest, the majority of our products come from a couple farms in Oregon. We have one in Colorado we work with. Um, one in California, one in Oklahoma, and then another one in Las Vegas that we work with. So um, we're act we actually applied for a grow license. So we're working on an infrastructure where we'll be growing our own hemp. Wow. Okay. And are y'all a? Um, do you have a storefront or is it mm -hmm. online? So we we both we are we have a store in the Bishop Arts District. It's located at five hundred two. North Madison Avenue in Dallas. We also have one under construction in Arlington, and that's at 3980 North Collins. It's across the street from the Viridian, um, which is a new development, I think that they've been working on for a couple of years. Um, and then we have our, our website as well. That's interesting. Um, so you guys are expanding. And are you going to be, are, are you going to be franchising it out? Are you going to be? I don't know yet. Location? I don't know yet. I, I, we've been um, just discussing the possibilities, but sometimes when you grow too fast, too soon, um, the quality and the customer service changes. So for now, we just want to keep it small and intimate. Um, and if I do decide to grow and expand in the future, then it would be with, you know, I'd feel really good about, you know, another person's ability to have the same vision and um, the same um, wanting to keep everything as, as good as it, it can be for okay. as long as possible. And this is going to be a second location, though, right? Oh, yeah. The R&D will be. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So um, tell me about what led you to get into the CBD business. So many different things. Um, so many different things. But m most importantly, it's, it's because I started realizing and doing more research on cannabis because I have a son with autism and we we started him on CBD uh, gummies um, some years back and it completely uh, changed his life. You know, it stopped his OCD symptoms and, you know, just a lot of compulsive behaviors that he was having. So just the type of person I am, I just wanted to know more and more about it all and I found out that prior to you know the 1930s um, 
cannabis was the number one medicine that had been used for centuries to treat all kinds of things. And it was the reasons why we feel so negative about it has nothing to do with the plan itself. It, it all has to do with propaganda. So essentially, you know, black and brown people were profiting off of hemp essentially that that's just what it was and hemp has always been a superior product to cotton um and it grows it grows faster it's cleaner it's it's better for the soil it grows without pesticides and it's just a superior product but the cotton farmers got together in the 30s and they went on this campaign um and they made the movie called reefer madness if you guys haven't seen it where they just painted What's it called? Reefer Madness. Reefer Madness? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll have to check. Is that on Netflix? It, it's on YouTube, actually, for free. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they came out with this campaign and they labeled cannabis users as like, you know, druggies who would rape you. Um, and they depicted a lot of black and brown people in it. Um, and it completely changed it completely changed the fabric of how we have viewed cannabis for centuries. And essentially a lot of those stereotypes still remain in our heads to this day. Um, and it, and it, and when you really start digging deep down into it, it, it has nothing to do with the plant or its benefits. It's just, it was an economical thing. Cotton farmers wanted you to use cotton and, and it worked. It worked even, even now, you know, we've seen the the war i'm not going to talk about the war on drugs itself but the war on cannabis um has disproportionately affected black and brown people um and all of it stems from from the campaigns that the cotton farmers um got together and ran back in the 30s it's crazy isn't it yes yes i did i was not aware of that at all. um and so I'm interested in knowing about this, um, how black and brown people were profiting off of it, because that's something that I definitely didn't. Well, at the time, a lot of a lot of of the cannabis was grown and the hemp was grown when they when they stopped growing it so much in the United States, they were still able to get it from other countries in South America and Mexico. So it was being imported. Um, and, and that's when, you know, things begin to change. Um, that's when things begin to change when, you know, the United States as a whole started focusing more on cotton as they have been since the 1800s, but the, the you know, the industrialization had happened. We were able to farm and then we were able to um, make all kinds of things out of cotton. Um, and they, they made that happen without any competition, essentially. And so when they, went, when they were able to get rid of the hemp that was coming out of South America and Mexico, then, you know, it's been a free-for-all ever since. Wow. So tell me about some of the other things, because you said that your son is autistic and the gummies have helped him. Yes. What? So um, we, our endocannabinoid system um, that we all have um, allows us to um, take in, you know, something like CBD and it really have an effect on our, our bodies and our brains. Um, that, you know, cannabinoids are found in, in all kinds of everyday products, even pepper, black pepper. Um, but um, the cannabis plant is is a is a more holistic way of of getting larger quantities or doses of it into our bloodstream. So for him, um, like I said, you know, it, it helped calm down his OCD symptoms. But for other people, I mean, I've just seen like so much in the short period of time as far as people who are trying to get off of opio opioids, um, they're able to start a CBD regimen and not need those anymore. You know, um, it's 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 essentially saving lives in, in that capacity because you can't you can't overdose on on cannabis. Nobody ever has. Um, it's not gonna 
you know, if you, you'll get sick if you take too much of it, but essentially you won't lose your life because of it. Um, you'll see people who have chronic pain, cancer patients, people who have fibromyalgia, lupus, um, they start a CBD regimen and they're able to alleviate a lot of that pain. Um, you see all, all types of things that, you know, and, and, the, and the biggest stereotype is that people who use CBD, um, you know, I know a lot, when we were looking and sourcing buildings to rent, a lot of people were like, no, you know, we're not going to rent to the CBD place because they, they, they believe it's marijuana, essentially. Um, and CBD mm. and, and marijuana are like cousins. You know, like a lemon and a lime. Um, they have different properties and essentially they can do different things. But the law says that we can only have 0.3% THC in a product uh, and, and it still be considered a, a CBD product. So none of our products have more than what the legal limit of CBD is. I mean, of, of, of THC, I'm sorry. Um, and so most people who use marijuana are not the first people in line to go and try CBD um, because, you know, essentially THC uh, provides a strong high that users like, and you're not going to get that using CBD. You get more of a relaxation. Okay. So I have a question about the THC. Can you explain the difference between C a THC and CBD? So there are over 122 cannabinoids found in the cannabis plant. Um, and CBD is one and THC is another. So they are they are essentially two elements that are found in the same plant. Um, CBD is highlighted a lot because it has a lot of healing properties and it, it can do so much. But again, you know, we're just at the cusp of starting to realize what a lot of these other ones do. Like CBG is becoming popular because it helps people with muscular pain um, and it, it, I mean, it, it helps with like menstrual cramps. It helps with body aches. Um, CBN is, is becoming popular because it, it's an effective sleep aid. And again, we're talking about, um, we're talking about no side effects. So, you know, these are, these are things that are, you know, over time you'll be hearing more and more about it. That's why, you know, a lot of people are going away from just calling themselves like CBD stores because we're finding that a lot of the other cannabinoids are just as powerful. So, um, to my understanding, Texas, the state of Texas right now, um, medical marijuana is not legal and i know you said they're like cousins and i'm kind of ignorant to how that works so can you explain that as far as the miracle marijuana and how that is or how it is connected to cbd and also um Is that like a thing that's next on the horizon? Um, so medical marijuana is legal here in Texas and for it to be considered, I'm sorry, people are just calling my phone. Um, for it to be considered um, medical marijuana, it can have up to 0.5% THC in it. It's very, very difficult to get but you found that people have a de decreased desire for medical to go through the process of obtaining the card to be able to buy it 
because one, it's it's so heavily regulated, and then there's not a big difference between the 0.3% that's legal and the 0.5% that you have to go through so much trouble for. Um, so you found that it's not as popular as it was um, a couple years ago uh, before the, the 2018 Farm Bill made hemp legal. Um, now, now, and when I say that like, their CBD and, and THC are cousins, that just means that they're elements of the same plant, but they're not the same element. THC is its own cannabinoid and CBD is its own. Um, and they have, they have different properties um, and can be used for different reasons. Um, most people like THC um, because of its, you know, it, it's relaxing properties. It, it can tend to give you a, um, a euphoria um, and people like the way that it makes them feel. Um, it does have medicinal benefits. Uh, so I don't want to take away from the fact that it does. CBD, um, however, doesn't have the the feelings of euphoria that you'll get in the THC plant. You're not going to get the same. You're not going to get the same um, feeling from that. What you'll do is more so get a relaxation along with a whole list of um, medical benefits, and and we focus on that because it's legal here. Um, people I know have often said, well, THC does all this. And I was like, yeah, but it, it's, you know, it's not legal here. So it's, it's good for educational purposes. But when people walk in the store and they want to know exactly what they can buy and what it does, then we tend to tell them. Um, there are three different types of CBD products that you can buy. Um, one is a CBD isolate based product. So that means that the CBD has been isolated from the cannabis plant and you just have CBD. Their, their CBD only is not detectable on a drug test at all. So you can take a CBD um, tincture or gummies and you, there's no way that it can be detected on a drug test. Um, there's broad spectrum. So it's, it's all the other cannabinoids and then they, they take THC out. So, so THC is extracted and then you're left with all the other cannabinoids. So you get the, the benefits of the synergy because they all work so well together to um, one is good, but when they all work together, you get the most benefit from it. So when, so you get the, the maximum benefit you can without having the THC, because again, it plays a part in, in the, the healing as well. Um, there's a small chance of a false positive um, when you take a broad spectrum just because of the other cannabinoids, even though the THC isn't there. So if somebody says, you know, I'm, I'm, I get tested and um, I wouldn't recommend a broad spectrum because again, there's, uh, even though it's a small possibility, um, there's the possibility that they can have a false positive. And then you have a full spectrum product that, in, that includes all the cannabinoids, including THC and up to the legal limit. So those are the primary differences. Okay. So a person who has a medical condition um, that would qualify them for the mar medical I marijuana. I can't hear you. I don't know what, what happened. Hold on, let me dial in. I don't know if I can dial in with my regular audio. What about now? Can you hear me? Okay. So, yeah. So, like I was asking, for the person who may qualify for medical marijuana, um, but may not want to go through that whole process. Is CBD um, a viable option for the same ailment? Yes, yes, it is. 
And like I said, there's not a big difference between what the medical marijuana limit is of 0.5% and 0.3%. I mean, there is a difference, but for some people, it's not um, a big enough one to want to go through the process of, um, and, and it's only certain conditions that uh, qualify for medical marijuana. So yeah. it, it's not, it's not, it's not easy to get at all. Gotcha. Okay. And what are some of those conditions? Epilepsy is one. It's a, and seizure disorders are um, because um, cannabis has been found to alleviate seizure disorders. I mean, and and it, it and it's some pre. I don't know if they approved um, cancer at all, but I know that 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 was on the agenda. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's very difficult to get in the conditions that um, are approved are are very few. I want to go back to oh, we were talking about your son earlier. Is CBD good for um, children with ADHD? Yes, it, it calms it calms them a lot, and then. Um, we we only recommend a, a CBD isolate or a broad spectrum product like a gummy for kids. But um, I have parents who come in and get um, we sell a multivitamin gummy, um, and I have parents who like come in every week and buy a bottle for their kids because they've seen such a dramatic difference in like their compo um, their hyperactive behaviors. Wow. Does it help with, with focus in school as well? It does. It does. It allows you to sustain attention a little bit longer. It, it, it helps. CBD doesn't fix anything in your body, but it does alert your body to the uh, potential that something is not aligned right, and it helps your body repair itself in so many different ways. So would you say that it is a better option than uh, some of these medications that are prescribed to, especially to children, um, school age. So that's a medical question that, you know, will be gotcha. different for everybody, um, depending on what the situation or the circumstance is. But what I can tell you is that in, in kids who have difficulty sustaining attention, um, they're hyperactive, they have difficulty focusing, um, you know, you will see some market change in their behaviors. Okay, and I, because I just think about all of, um, especially the black and brown children who are just so easily labeled and then thrown in this category and thrown into, um, you know, well, they don't, I don't think they really do special classes anymore, um, unless it's really uh, severe, but they're kind of given this label, right? And then right. kind of pushed aside. Um, right. So I was just wondering, you know, how that can help our children, um, especially in the black community. Because that kind of follows you when they get those once they label you in school, you know, mm -hmm. it follows you as you go to high school, um, you know, and, and a lot of times even in the corporate world, it affects, um, it'll affect things like, like getting uh, insurance, you know, whether it's medical insurance, life insurance, and things like that. Promotions, if you want to join the military, um, all types of things yeah it does um but but i can say that people who um use it tend to have a lot of positive results so where do you see from your vantage point right now where do you see the cbd industry going next five to ten years 
Well, I think that we're going, it's going to become more commonplace. I think that the stigma that's related to can, use of, the use of cannabis is dissipating um, slowly, but progress is progress. And I think that the negative attitude that people have toward the use of cannabis, I think is slowly changing. Um, it's just one of those things where, you know, people have to get over the stereotypes that they were taught. And the more and more that happens and the more and more second nature to people and there's no embarrassment, you would be amazed at how many people walk into the store and it's like, I've never done this stuff before. And I'm like, hold on, let's talk about this. Let's, let's talk about why you feel like you needed to say that. So tell me, tell me what your thoughts of um, that led you to even have this negative viewpoint um, of, of kind of being embarrassed or, or needing to kind of give a disclaimer of you walking in here to possibly purchase something that could change your life, you know? And you, you just be amazed at how people feel. But again, a lot of it goes back to the propaganda that we were taught that really has no basis in fact. And so I like the fact that we get to re-educate people um, about about these sort these about the about cannabis. We 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 get to be a part of that change. Um, and I think that so many other cultures are very, very quick to do the research and you know um, they really don't have any any hesitation but i think that as 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 black and brown people we've been stigmatized for so long for the use of and of cannabis that a lot of us like shun away from it like we don't want any parts of it and i think that you know the more and more we get comfortable with with the idea that it's here and there are benefits and you know it's not about getting high I think that you're going to see a lot of change in even our health statistics um, the more and more we, we use it. That's good. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. The whole health thing. Um, when you first decided to open up a CBD store, did you get any judgment from people around you, whether your family, your friends, or... Um, Yep. Yep. And everybody, you know, was like, it's fine if you want to do a CBD store, but why name it the weed spot? Like, why would you want to do that? And, and my question is like, why not? I mean, why, why do you, why do you feel like that's a negative word? Like you'll, you'll go down the street and you'll see 12 different weed whacker companies or, you know what I mean? So it's your, it's your, it's your perception about what marijuana is that you're judging me based on, but we don't sell marijuana in my store because, because marijuana is not legal. So tell me why you feel Nick, because the definition of the word weed means a plant that grows and thrives in places where it's not wanted. Right? So, we're not talking about the actual definition of the word that you have actually have a, a, a problem with. You you have a you have an issue with the street name for marijuana, which is the weed whacker man doesn't sell weed uh, in the in the street sense. So you know, I, a big part of why I wanted to name it this was was the conversation piece and the education piece, because I knew that people would immediately have questions. And even if they had negative viewpoints, I knew the minute they walked in our store, we would probably change their mind. That's one. I like that. Um, did you have any issues with getting funding from your? Yep. Yeah, so what I was saying was that. Um, what what part? What part? I don't know where I actually you, So you were saying that um, you named it the weed spot because you knew that it would spark a conversation, it would spark a question. So that's your chance to educate folks. Yeah. And so, you know, 
a lot of people didn't want me to do that and I got turned away um, when it came to um, leasing space in the area just because people were like so afraid of like what it was really going to be even though I did my best to kind of try and explain what the concept was about um, it, it's that I feel like the cannabis plant is that rose that grew through the concrete because no matter what we've tried to do in the last 100 years or so it's still thriving and we're, it's still out here healing people so that's a big part of like my personality is like teaching people. You know, I used to be a math teacher um, and I worked in the school district for a long time. And so just, just innately, like that's a part of my personality. So I'm, I'm very happy to be in a position where um, we're, we are, I can actually see like lives being changed before me and that makes me feel really good. So a lot of your customers, are they repeat? Yes. yes. Yep. Um, our products are good. Like we, I really took my time and sourced, I feel like from the right people. Um, and I really believe in the products that we sell. I believe in the farmers that we work with. I have open invitations to visit the farms whenever I want to. Um, and that makes me feel good so that, you know, a lot of times I can see a, a, a crop being grown and, you know, like four months later when it's in my store, you know, I can tell you the story about it. Wow. Mm -hmm. So do you host any educational events around CBD? We were doing that before COVID happened. Um, and, and we want to pick that up as soon as it's safe to do so. Gotcha. Yep. Have you thought about virtual? Everything you know what? Is I hadn't. Now. I hadn't. I'm like one of those old school people, but I know I need to get out of that. I know I yeah. need to step into the, it's the way it's, it's the post COVID-19 <laughs> way. I know. Yes. I know, but you're, you're right. That is something that we probably could do instead of in person. We can host virtual classes. You know, take yeah. that. Probably host people. more people as well. Yep. That's yeah. true. For sure. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and you said you were, you were a teacher before. Mm -hmm. Did you have any qualms about leaving teaching and jumping into entrepreneurship? Mm -mm. No. No. Like I'm not really scared of a lot and I'm not really scared to fail. Um, which is kind of a gift and a curse <laughs> for somebody like me. But, um, you know, I'm the type of person, if I need to go and live with my mama for a little while, I will. You know, so there's really not anything to be scared about when it comes to, um, you know, just realizing your dreams and putting a plan into action. I feel like you have um, a less likelihood of failing when you know when you put the research into every step that you're going to take and you even think about all the negative or the bad things that could happen or the things that could go wrong. And when you kind of plan all that out, I'm not saying that you can't fail, but it's a less likelihood because you'll be even prepared for, you know, certain things to happen. Like, and that's kind of one thing that I took from teaching. You know, we always plan when we're doing lessons about all of the things that could interrupt our teaching, right? Somebody could stand up and need to go to the bathroom or somebody could, you know, need to go get their pencil sharpened or somebody came unprepared then we plan for scenarios around that of how we'll deal with that when that happens. So when it happens, we're not caught off guard, we're prepared and we know exactly how we're going to act. And so I kind of entered, you know, a business standpoint with the same thing. Okay, well, what's the worst that could happen is, you know, nobody comes in the store. So then you think about, okay, well, if that happens, then how long can I sustain? And am I prepared to sustain that long um, before having to close. And if I was ready to deal with that consequence, then, you know, I was ready to go forward. With it. 
That is excellent preparation and definitely <laughs> lessons um, that we can all take from that because, you know, as entrepreneurship is on the rise in the Black community, especially amongst Black women. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you guys been open in the Chicago? We've been open, officially our grand opening date was February 1st. So we've been no, open this year? Yes. Oh, you know, congratulations. So that, so wow. Wow. Yeah, because this is now in the middle of COVID-19 happening. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, that that is actually amazing. Um, and so how has this whole thing affected because you, you spoke about planning and the shutdowns happened in March and in February, we were kind of okay, you know, it's a virus, you know, but nobody thought that we would be going into July and still partially shut down businesses are some businesses are still shut down and and most of them have orders to only take in a certain capacity um so how how has that affected well, your business and your scared. mindset about it i was scared <laughs> <laughs> i was scared so we closed for like a month because I didn't want any of the kids that work there to get sick. Like, I, I really, like, wanted to make sure that I knew enough about how to protect them and the customers that were coming in before we opened up. So when we opened up, we, you know, we cleaned constantly. Um, we, we uh, I mean, we really, like, try and do a good job of disinfecting everything, even after you use. We have hand sanitizers and all types of things available. And then we don't allow any more than six people in the store at a time. Has business been kind of steady since you were able to open? Yeah, we're real, we're really, really blessed. Um, that, you know, we're in an industry where, you know, people need the products. So when you put out something good and, and people get benefit out of it, then they'll keep coming back, especially, you know, when um, things, when we were closed, you know, our customers that are, um, that, you know, frequented us, you know, we would just deliver to them, no contact, leave it on the porch, um, whatever we could do to, how to make that transition seamless for them so that they didn't, you know, have to go without what they needed. I think it's amazing that you just opened your first location in February and you are building to open a second location and it's less than six months. That well, it was already planned. Okay. So we signed the, the difference between the two locations is that the one in Arlington is a new build, so it's new construction. So there's like a whole process um, that went along with that. So we signed both leases at the same time. Wow. So it was always the intention to open two. Well, that's even more amazing because <laughs> most I know, of right? us that could have that that went really, really bad, but but I just want to commend you because that is, did you, was this, so you plan for this, you plan to open up two locations in two different areas of DFW all in the same year. Um, what are you, What, what are your projections, I guess, for the business? Like, where do you see it next year this time? You know, I hope to have three locations this time next year and that they're all successful. 
providing great products and great customer service, great quality to the community. Um, that's where I hope that we are. Um, and we'll, we'll, you know, definitely keep working at um, achieving that. That's where I, I definitely like to be. Somewhere in North Dallas. Okay. I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. I am just amazed that you opened up a business right before COVID happened. No. And, you know, you're thriving. And I say thriving because you're still opening and from what I'm understanding, a lot of, not only black businesses, but just businesses in general, um, this has affected a lot of businesses to where they cannot reopen. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's amazing. And clearly you have the hand of God is all up in there. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's that's what I say all the time is that when you do things in his time and in his purpose, and you genuinely have the heart for what you're doing and you put all of that, I think that it shows and people know genuinely. Um, and, and that's what we want to continuously give, never take for granted any kind of successes that we have. We want to earn everybody's business every time they walk through the door. Thank you.